She's just shy. She's quiet. Don't mind her. She doesn't like to talk. Why are you so quiet? Come on, join the conversation. These phrases, along with so many others, are the main things I hear people say about me, both to my face and when they think I'm not listening. Ask anyone that knows me. I'm generally a quiet and reserved individual. I wasn't always this way. I wasn't always so quiet. Growing up, I loved to talk. I would take the nearest person and make them listen to me ramble on and on about my life, what I did last weekend, what I ate for breakfast. You get the point. I love to perform. I enjoyed the feeling of getting up on stage and having everyone's eyes on me while I acted out whatever role I was playing. My mom even told me that while other kids cried and reached for their parents when strangers approached them, I was the opposite. I would look the person straight in the eyes and I would laugh. That's how comfortable I was around people. I was always the first to raise my hand in class, even when I didn't necessarily know the answer. My teachers constantly commented on my social nature. They said it was good that I was so communicative. It was good that I knew how to interact with others. It was that period of my life that I first heard of the word introvert. More specifically, I heard someone describe me as one. By definition, an introvert is a shy, reticent person, or in psychology, a person predominantly concerned with their own thoughts and feelings rather than with external things. In another manner of speaking, introverts are the type of people that gain their energy from being alone, while extroverts, the opposite, gain it from being around people. Now, before I move on, I know what some of you may be thinking: Why am I dedicating a full 10-minute speech to a concept that, frankly, doesn't seem very significant? I'm going to let you think about that question, and hopefully, by the end of my speech, you'll have an answer. If you ask anyone you're close to or share a relationship with, your mom, dad, sister, friend, whether or not they identify as an introvert, I can almost guarantee that at least one of them will respond with a yes. In fact, it is estimated that introverts make up 25 to 40 percent of the world's population. So, if these people aren't a minority, why are there so many misconceptions and incorrect assumptions that exist about these personalities? And more importantly, why must your societal label, whether introvert or extrovert, be the driving force behind all of your interactions and ultimately determine who you are as an individual in this world? Allow me to explain. Being an introvert is far more complicated than it seems. There are so many misconceptions and incorrect assumptions about the type of people that we are. Think of a bakery. The baker bakes a large amount of cakes. Even though they're all cakes, each one has a different flavor, a different amount of sweetness, and a different design. The baker then takes all of the cakes and packs them into the same-looking box. To the customer, all of the cakes look the same. Only when the customer opens the boxes and actually tastes the cake will they be able to truly distinguish between them. The same is true for introverts. If a person seems shy, reserved, and sad, society automatically packs them into the group of introverts without any regard to their individual qualities. This disregard is what results in the inherent misconceptions. One of the major misconceptions about introverts is the fact that there's a direct relationship between being shy and being introverted. The fact that all introverts are shy and all shy people are introverts. For most of my life, people have assumed that I was a naturally shy person. The truth is, I'm not. But years and years of people telling me that I was a shy person has slowly molded itself into my mind, making me and no doubt many others associate the idea of being shy with being an introvert. And while it is true that some introverts are shy and vice versa, it's simply not the case for everyone. Shyness is more known by discomfort and anxiety from situations that involve social interaction, and introversion is just the need to gain energy from being alone. Another major misconception about introverts is the idea that introverts aren't engaged. I get this a lot from people. They assume that because I don't speak, that I'm not engaged in the conversation, that I'm not understanding of what's going on. We are, as a matter of fact, engaged, just in a different way. Instead of engaging through speaking, we listen. Most, if not all, of what introverts do is listen. They listen and take in everything, all the thoughts and ideas and perspectives, and then they act. There's a reason for this. Listening makes you more aware of your surroundings and the types of people around you. You can speak all you want about something, but only when you truly begin to listen to the other side will you understand what you're talking about. 
While extroverts speak, introverts listen, yet both are equally valuable in every sense. The truth is, despite these misconceptions, the main reason why being an introvert is so hard in our modern society is because of one seemingly simple reason. Society favors extroverts. Think about it. The most common aspects of our lives rely heavily on the trait of being social. Job interviews. Bosses generally prefer to hire people who are outgoing and surround an aura of confidence. The education system. It's geared against introverts. You're taking kids and placing them in a classroom filled with other students. You're constantly evaluating their speaking skills and even grading them based on their participation. You encourage students to join group activities, to interact more, to speak more. From a young age, we're taught quantity over quality, that the number of words we say is more important than the actual meaning behind those words. We're taught that the only way we can be successful in our lives is if we're talkative. Now, I have about a year, 53 days, and 7.25 hours left of high school, not that I'm counting or anything, so that means I constantly hear people telling me the same things. If you want to get into a good college, you need to join group activities, you need to interact more, you need to do sports, you need to speak more. And I do agree with them to some extent, but why must I tell people what I'm capable of through my words when I could show them instead through my actions? After all, don't actions speak louder than words? Candidly, we live in a society that just disregards and looks down upon those who don't vocalize their thoughts as much as others. When did this happen? When did a private thought become any less important than a spoken one? Now, I don't mean to imply that social interaction has no place or importance in our society. The opposite is true. We're all humans and we all crave for company and important people in our lives. But the degree to which we need to be social is concerning, a fact brought up by society's ridiculously high expectations of how social we need to be. If you don't necessarily meet those expectations, you can't expect to amount to something in your lifetime. This is one of the main things that really bothers me about the whole introvert-extrovert thing. People believe that introverts aren't cut out to be leaders. Leadership is a trait solely associated with those who are vocal and social. In fact, studies have consistently shown that people believe extroversion is one of the most important traits that a leader can have. Why? In our modern society, people want to be around confident people, confident leaders. They want to feel like there's someone in control of the situation, someone who can help lead a team towards success and be there to shield them whenever they falter. Extroverts are more likely to articulate that vibe. It's true. People who identify as extroverts are more likely to be seen as confident and strong individuals who are able to both engage and educate others. I believe, however, that society's perception of a good leader has fluctuated. Instead of being someone who can help lead a team towards success while keeping in mind everyone's best interests, it's become someone who is vocal and upfront, someone who can manifest the image of control and power to the public eye. Leadership isn't just about how much you talk in your life of the party personality. Leadership is about how well you listen to others, how well you solve problems, how easily you can adapt to certain situations, all skills that are recognizable by people regardless of whether they identify as introverts or extroverts. You don't believe me? Bill Gates, CEO of Microsoft, Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook, they're all introverts. Some of the most successful and influential people of our times aren't in fact social butterflies. They need their time away from people. Does that fact make them any less of the leader they are? Not at all. The fact is that introverts have so much potential, so much power to change the world and rise as leaders, a power that is constantly being overlooked by others. And while it is true that most people aren't distinctly introvert or extrovert, everyone has varying degrees of this personality, which is why it is so important to truly understand introverts. The key to understanding introverts is to not understand introverts. Don't try to figure out if a person is an introvert or not, and don't associate certain traits with them based on that judgment. Accept that not talking as much isn't a bad trait, that listening is equally as important as speaking, and that leadership isn't only for those who love to socialize. Personally, I don't believe that I will ever be more social than I am right now, and that's perfectly fine. How much I raise my hand in class and speak to others freely doesn't hinder my ability to be a decent human being. It doesn't take away the opportunity for me to leave my mark on the world. In fact, me being an introvert isn't restricting me from anything. It's society, that is. 
a society that desires only charismatic and outgoing characters, that judges an individual based on their social value rather than the value of their thoughts and actions and contributions. At the beginning of my speech, I asked you all the significance of my words. Why is it so important to change the way you view introverts and recognize them for their true potential? Let me counter that question with another one. Who determines our identity? We do. We are the ones who determine our identities. We are the ones who decide who we are as people. What we don't have control of, however, is the way that other people perceive us, the way society perceives us. That factor, the way society perceives us, is what determines who gets to rise up in society and who gets left behind in the dust. The fear of not being accepted due to those perceptions is a fact that haunts many of us introverts and prevents us from rising to our full potential. So I urge you all to look past society's perception of introverts, to recognize them for who they really are. Don't judge that quiet kid at the back of the class and assume they're shy, lonely, and forlorn. Who knows, maybe one day that quiet kid at the back of the class that barely spoke a word might end up being more successful and influential than you could ever imagine. Thank you.